Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to have a look at questions uh, 104 through 108 in section 3 of the Green Booklet. So this covers units 34 and 35. We start off with question 104, which says, Of the following, the greatest decline in salmonella numbers occurs during which day? So we're going to be looking at line 1 here in figure 1, which is the graph we've been given here. And this is the line that indicates the size of the introduced salmonella population. So... Uh, we're looking at the sharpest decrease in one day, and we'll see that would be on the fourth day, and that gives us an answer for 104 of A. 105 and says, which one of the following is the best estimate of the reduction in size of the normal bacterial population between drenching and day seven? So the change in population, so we're going from uh, just over 10 to the eight down to 10 to the six. And 10 to the eight is going to be uh, 100 million. And we're going down to 1 million. So that's a difference of 99 million. And so that means the best estimate for the reduction in size, the answer closest to this, is going to be 100 million, or D. Moving on then to question 106, we've got an equation here that describes how gases can diffuse and the rate of diffusion uh, based on density and I've copied that out here and we've got a couple of values for neon and krypton. 106 says um, what is the, the ratio basically of the densities or sorry of the uh, rates of diffusion for both neon and krypton. So I think it, it's best just to work this out. So this answer is pretty much one and this value is pretty much four. So let's work out the rate for and neon, which is going to be 1 over root 1, which obviously is obviously just going to be 1. And then if we work out the rate for krypton, it's going to be 1 over root 4, uh, which is uh, 1 over 2. So that means it's going to be a 2 to 1 ratio of neon to krypton, uh, which means neon diffuses twice as fast as krypton, it means the answer for 106 is going to be C. 107 has some additional information to it, and the important bit there is the second sentence, which says, the rate of diffusion is easier to measure as it's inversely proportional to the time taken for a known volume to be released. That's the important bit. Okay, so 107 talks about two gases, X and Y, and we're told that they have densities of DX and DY, and they take a certain amount of time to diffuse, which is going to be TX and TY. So we are asked if the time taken to release a certain volume of gas is Tx, and the time taken to release the same volume of gas Y is Ty, and the ratio Tx or Ty is equal to what? Okay, so we've got the um, diffusion rate of X is going to be um, 1 over the square root of the density of X, and the diffusion rate of Y is going to be 1 over the density of Y. If um, we're going to be then finding a ratio of these two, if we're going to be finding a ratio of these um, rates, we can use that to infer the ratio of times in terms of their densities. So if we divide dx by dy, or sorry, the, the rates here, um, then we get 1 over dx, and we're going to multiply it by um, dy over 1. And we end up with this ratio it's going to be um, the density of y divided by the density of x and the square root of this. Now the important line I mentioned was that this is going to be inversely proportional to the time taken and we're looking for something that's equal to the ratios of the time taken. So the final answer we're just going to have to flip it upside down and so we get um, tx by ty um, is going to be uh, proportional to the square root of the density of x divided by the density of y all square rooted. So that means that we're going to get an answer of A for 107. 108 then says, as certain temperature and pressure 50 milliliters of the gas whose molecular formula is unknown took 250 seconds. So we're going to say T is going to be 250 seconds here. And then under precisely the same conditions, 50 milliliters of argon took 100 seconds. So the time for argon is 100 seconds. I think it's useful always just to write down what information you already know. Now the atomic mass of argon is going to be um, 40 
and the mass here is unknown. And that's what we're going to try and work out. Great. So now that we know this equation here, uh, we can use that because the density of the gas can be related to the weight of the molecules themselves. And that's going to affect the, how they diffuse. So if we've got um, a ratio of these times, and we'll say that this is Tx, and we call this Ty, then we can end up with a ratio of Tx to Ty, or T for argon and T for the unknown, equal to 100 over 250. And that's going to be equal to the square root of uh, 40 over the mass because we can substitute these densities for the molecular masses. Great, so then we can simplify this equation um, to 2 fifths equals root 40 over m, and we can square both sides then, and we get 4 over 25 is equal to 40 over m. So let's multiply both sides by m, we get 4m over 25 equals 40 m equals um, 10 times 25, we're going to divide both sides by 4 and get a value for m, the mass of this unknown to be 250, and then that corresponds to an answer of d for question 108. So that was uh, questions.